in five, four, three, two, one. Before starting, I designed an infographic timeline of Widowmaker's story, describing her story during Overwatch's events, and I uploaded it on Patreon. It's for those who are interested in being able to have a look at her story without rewatching the video again. Parfait. Oh, thank you. These are one among many rewards for patrons, so if you're willing to support Masterminds HD monetarily, you can find the specifics on Patreon. Where were we? Chateau Guillard. For hundreds of years, it has been the estate of the influential Guillard family. In her younger years, Amélie Guillard grew up here. As the castle was large, she often ran into spiders, more specifically, the Black Widow. How convenient. As a child, she had a fear of spiders. They had no emotion, the hearts never beat. Or at least, that's what she has been told. Years later, she moved to Paris, where she was an accomplished ballet dancer. Shortly after, she met with Gérard Lacroix, an Overwatch agent spearheading operations against Talon. She ended up marrying him, leading her to meet other Overwatch agents like Anna Amari. Gerard often was the target of Talon assassination attempts, yet successfully got away every single time. Talon decided to change their focus on his wife. Not much later, she got abducted by Talon operatives. Back in their headquarters, they subjected her to an intense program of neural reconditioning. The specifics were never leaked, but it must have been horrible. They broke her will, suppressed her personality, and reprogrammed her as a sleeper agent. Later, she was found by Overwatch agents, who brought her back so she could return to her normal life. But it was all but normal. Two weeks later, she assassinated Gerard in his sleep. The Widow's Kiss. With her mission complete, she returned to Talon where they completed the process of turning her into a living weapon. Besides covert ops training, they altered her physiology. To increase her lethality as the sniper she was, they reduced her heart rate, turning her skin cold and blue. This also numbed her ability to experience any sort of emotion, turning her into an exceptional sniper. As it appears, Moira might have had a hand in this process. How are you feeling, Lacroix? I don't feel. That's the point, isn't it? During this time, she also got a tattoo on her right forearm. It reads, Aragne du soir cauchemar, which is French for the spider in the evening nightmare. It's a play on an old French superstition that goes, Aragne du matin charin, Aragne du soir espoir. Directly translated, it means spider in the morning grief, spider in the evening hope. A more literal translation is, if you see a spider in the morning, it's bad luck, if you see a spider in the evening, it's good luck. However, she turned it into a nightmare because you don't want to run into her at night. Nice play on words there, Amélie. Merci. After her training was complete, Amélie was gone and replaced with... Widowmaker. Ironically named after the spider in a castle she was so afraid of. Overwatch's Jack Morrison led a strike team to rescue a number of scientists that Talon had taken hostage. Anna Amari, considered world's best sniper at that point, provided support from afar. Out of nowhere, Overwatch agents got picked off one by one. It was a sniper, and a good one at that. When she finally located the target, she flushed the sniper out by sending in exploding drones. Upon getting a visual, Anna took the shot. A shot of the helmet incapacitating the sniper. Temporarily, however. But as Anna looked at the face of the sniper, she froze. It was Amelie Guillard. But how could it be? She was kidnapped by Talon. Widowmaker needed no more than that split second of hesitation. You were once a legend. But what are you now? Just a shell of a woman. Months later, Widowmaker was sent on a mission in King's Row. Widowmaker's objective was to assassinate Tekarta Mondata, the Shambhali leader, during a speech he was about to give. The Shambhali were a group of Omnic monks who sought to heal the wounds caused by the Omnic crisis and bring back harmony to society. 
Eliminating him would be huge for Talon, as he was an international celebrity. Mondara was giving his speech in front of the Meridian Hotel. Widowmaker got dropped off by a Talon airship on a rooftop nearby. After incapacitating the rooftop guards, Widowmaker lowered herself through a grappling hook to line up the shot on the target. But before she could fire the shot, she noticed a swift blue dash in one of her seven visors. It was Tracer. During the rooftop chase, Widowmaker noticed Mondada was ushered away, having been warned by Tracer. She spotted him using her infra sight, chasing him. The two kept dueling, ending up in Tracer throwing her pulse bomb. Widowmaker shot the bomb, launching both of them in the air. She lined up her shot to Tracer's chronal accelerator, and then she took the shot. One shot, one kill. Tracer recalled quickly to avoid getting shot, but as she got up, relieved that she had dodged the bullets, she realized what had happened. The ambition of Talon quickly sent Widowmaker together with another Talon operative Reaper to retrieve Doomfist's gauntlet. Before even reaching the gauntlet they were met with force by two Overwatch agents, Tracer and Winston. The fight went their way and Widowmaker was at the point of grabbing the gauntlet when she needed to assist Reaper. When she turned around the gauntlet was gone. She started looking around and all of a sudden got hit in the face with the gauntlet. The gauntlet appeared broken. So they quickly exfiltrated the museum, albeit with Tracer and Winston on their heels. A few months passed by and Talon had a new mission for Widowmaker. Viali, a council member of Talon, steered the organization in a new profit-driven direction. Katja Volskaya, CEO of Volskaya Industries, Russia's primary anti-Omnic security force, was unwilling to give in to Viali's demands. Viali sent Widowmaker alongside Reaper and their new recruit Sombra to assassinate Katja Volskaya. Katja was the CEO of Volskaya's Industries, infiltrating the base. They eliminated any guards they came across. When Sombra took down the facility's security system, Reaper and Widowmaker could access the site. Widowmaker started lining up her shot, but as she was about to take it, an alarm sounded. They sent the base on high alert and Katja to her fortified office. Widowmaker took the shot, but missed by less than an inch. Reaper then pursued, but got waylaid by a mech. Which led to the final hope, Sombra. An intense chase ensued, but it appeared Katja had escaped. Mission failed. Target escaped. Get back to the ship. During Christmas, Widowmaker took a visit to Gerard's resting place. She left a rose on her husband's grave, although it's unsure why, but perhaps she started feeling some emotion again. Widowmaker had spent some of her time back at home of Chateau Guillard. She received an email during her stay there. She would travel to Monaco, or so it appeared. After Reaper freed Doomfist from his prison, they rendezvoused with Widowmaker at a casino in Monaco, a small principality below France. Doomfist had to talk to Maximilian, a council member of Talon who was sitting at the game table. Widowmaker partook in the game while Doomfist talked to Maximilian. 
At some point, Talon agents, sent by Viali, started creeping up on the gang. Now that Doomfist had escaped from prison, he formed the threat. Sadly for Vialli, his assassination attempt failed. Doomfist and the crew immediately left for Venice, where they were supposed to meet Vialli at a masquerade ball. Widowmaker and Reaper took out the local talent agents, while Doomfist was focused on Vialli. This didn't end well for the man. While Reaper and Doomfist headed to the talent council chamber, Widowmaker disappeared. Not to be heard of again. Although, a boarding ticket in Chateau Guillard could give us a clue where she's heading next. Amélie Guillard, a girl who was a renowned ballerina with a fear of spiders, turned into a sleeper agent, murdering her own husband and becoming perhaps Talon's most lethal assassin, the Widowmaker. What did you think of her story? Let me know in the comments down below. Before ending the video, here's a quick reminder for those interested in being able to have a look at Widowmaker's story without rewatching the video. I designed an infographic timeline of her story. It's available on Patreon among other rewards for those who are willing to support us monetarily. The specifics can be found on Patreon. Thank you for watching, it's greatly appreciated as always. If you made it all the way to the end, I'd like to ask you to consider leaving a rating, good or bad, whatever you think it deserves. Peace out. Goodbye.